Howdy campers and welcome to your second REST API tutorial and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up Node.js and MongoDB on your computer. Okay then, so in this video I'm going to be walking you through setting up a development environment with Node.js and MongoDB. So if you're already comfortable doing that and you understand how all the moving parts interact, feel free to skip to the next lesson where I'm going to talk about HTTP methods. For the rest of us, the first thing we want to do is install Node.js. To do that, head to nodejs.org and download by clicking this button right here. Okay, so once you've done that, just walk through the installation instructions, keep everything the same as, and that's going to install Node as well as NPM, the Node Package Manager, on your computer. Okay, so to make sure that it is installed correctly, just go to your command line tool. I'm using Commander and type node space hyphen v for version. That is going to come back with the version installed on your computer if successful, okay? So there we go, there's Node.js installed. The next thing we want to do is install MongoDB. So I've gone to mongodb.com and I'm going to click this download button in the top right. This is going to take you to the download page for your operating system. So you want to download and install that as well. Now that's downloaded onto our computer, but it's not configured to run on our computer. Once it's downloaded, there's a couple of things we need to do to make it work, right? So you wanna to head to your command line tool, again, I'm using Commander, and navigate to your C drive right here, the root level. You can do that using CD, okay, change directory. Or you can use the file explorer to navigate to it instead. Once you're in there, I'm going to list the contents by typing dir, and then you can see this data folder right here. Now, you probably won't see this in your C drive. This is a folder I've created so that MongoDB has somewhere to store its data. It's going to look into this folder by default, okay? So you need to create the data folder on your C drive first of all. Now, once you've done that, navigate into the data folder. I'm going to do that by saying cd data. And I'm going to say DIR again to list the contents. And you'll see this other folder called DB. Again, you're not going to see this one either. You'll need to create this DB folder for the database contents of MongoDB. All right. So once you've created those two folders, then it is configured. But it's not running yet. We need to run it as well. So to do that, I'm going to head to the documentation. And you're going to see this start MongoDB thing right here. And this command right here is going to execute this Mongo daemon executable file for us, and that is going to run MongoDB for us, okay? So you want to copy all of this, including the quotations, and a quick caveat, you see this 3.4 thing right here, this is the version number. So if you've downloaded a different version, you're going to need to replace this number right here with whatever version you have downloaded, okay? So copy that, head to your command line tool again, paste it right in, hit enter and this my friends is going to run mongodb in the background now it might look like a load of junk but believe me this is now running and you can see here it's waiting for connections on port 27017 so that is waiting uh, and so that is running sorry and waiting for connections to it so for the rest of this series i'm going to assume that you've got this mongodb running in the background otherwise some of the code that we write when we communicate with the database is not going to work all right so now we have Node.js, NPM, MongoDB all installed, and MongoDB is running in the background listening for connection requests, okay? So let's head to Atom now. And what I've done is just open a folder called REST API Playlist. This has got nothing in it, so you can create a folder or download mine from GitHub and open this in your text editor. This one's Atom. And the first thing I want to do is create a package.json file in this directory. So the package.json file is going to contain information about our project and also track our dependencies. So any third party packages that we install like Express or Mongoose later on, it's going to track those for us. OK, so to create that package.json file, I'm going to go to this thing right here and I'm going to create a new terminal or a new console for start. And then currently this is in this directory. I want to be in this directory. So I'll right click over here, go to copy full path, and then head to this thing again, type CD, paste that path in, and it's going to navigate to this directory. Then to create this package.json file, I'm going to say npm init, and then I'm going to pass it the Y flag, which basically means that it's going to auto fill our package.json file for us. And you can see that file right there. 
and it's also been created over here. So if we double click, we can see the name of it, the version, the description. This index.js is going to be the entry point for our application. We're going to create that file later on and other information as well. Now, there's no packages installed yet, so it's not tracking any packages just yet. But when we install packages later, it's going to list those down here as well. Now, just a quick gotcha here. If you're using my course files, if you download, for example, lesson seven, it's not going to download any third party packages that we install. So to install those, once you've downloaded them, you're going to have to run npm start. Oh, sorry, npm, sorry, install. And that's going to install all the different packages for you that you require for that particular lesson, that stage in the project, okay? So there we go. We've got Node.js installed, we've got our package.json file, and we've got MongoDB running in the background. Now, before we go any further, I just want to take a quick look at how all the different parts of our API are going to work together. So we're going to be making an application on Node.js using Express to help us do it. Now, Express is a package we can install on Node.js, which is going to make things such as listening to requests and handling them much easier. OK, so we're going to have our Node Express app running a server here, listening for requests from the outside world. Right. We also have MongoDB running over here in the background as well. And that is waiting for our Node.js Express app to communicate with it. So the idea is that these two components right here, these things are going to make up basically our API. And our API is going to be running, waiting for requests to be made to it from another application, such as the front end of this thing, or a mobile application, or some other website. So for example, this other website right here, this could make a GET request to our API using this endpoint right here, ninjago.com forward slash API forward slash ninjas. This is just a name I've made up. It's not a real website. Uh, this is like a fictitious name for my API, right? So this other website is making a GET request to this endpoint right here, this resource. So it's going to send that GET request to the Express app. The Express app is going to look at it and say, hey, look, this is a GET request and it's to this endpoint. So I'm going to deal with this to give it the resource it wants. It's going to communicate with MongoDB, get the list of ninjas, bring them back and send them back in JSON format to this other website. This other website receives those ninjas in JSON format and then can cycle through them and display them in their own web page or however they like to the end user. So now we have everything set up and ready to go. But before we write any code, I want to take a few minutes in the next lesson to talk about the different HTTP verbs or methods we'll be using to talk to this API, which are get, post, put and delete.